Hey guys, Kakarot1970 again. This time with a review of the high grade gun barrel dagger from the Gundam Seed MSV series. And as far as average Gundam Seed kits go, it doesn't really get more average than this guy. I personally love the 105 dagger, and in terms of proportions, they totally nailed it. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we've got seam lines running right through the middle of literally every single part of this model kit, and that you'll have to do quite a bit of painting to get this thing to look completely color accurate. And that is with the relatively big sticker sheet. We've got a nice shiny blue visor sticker and a shiny green one for the main camera. Then we get some shiny bronze triangles for the shoulders and smaller ones for the chest and the knees. And even though I typically don't like shiny stickers for parts that shouldn't be shiny, in the dagger's case I do quite like the bronze. And then finally we get black stripes for on the knees and for the upper arms. And like I said this still leaves us with quite a bit left to paint. Gray for the handlebars on the shoulders, the bottom of the shoulders, the collar including the whole back part, the top of the back skirt thrusters and the beam saber holders. Next up is some black from the bottom of the back skirt thruster, the non-functional weapons hard points on the legs, the thrusters on the legs, the lower abdomen and the main thruster with orange on the inside. And finally don't forget some green for the back camera although you could always cut that out from the leftovers on the sticker sheet. And talking about stickers, we also get some clear marking stickers, number 1 to 3, an Omni Enforcer insignia, and Moonlight Mad Dog Morgan Chevalier's personal insignia. So that means that straight out of the box, we're getting an acceptable 105 dagger that will look significantly better with some paint. Even for 2004, this kind of color separation was on the lower end of the spectrum. Fortunately, things do get a lot better when we have a look at the accessories that this thing comes with. And starting off with the weapons that are already on the machine, we get a pair of 40mm Eagle Stellung II Vulcan guns on the head and 12.5mm anti-personnel guns on the feet. Then mounted onto the side skirts, we get two beam sabers that of course also come with a pair of nice pink beam saber blades. And as you can see there's a peg on the beam saber itself which also helps a little bit with securing it into the hand. But believe me, even without the help of that peg it would have been a very secure fit. Then for extra weaponry we get the M703 beam rifle, or at least that's what the manual calls it because the M703 beam rifle is the one that's used by the regular strike dagger. This rifle that the 105 dagger comes with is actually the Gao 8 M2. And it's not a beam rifle, it's a machine gun. Still, it does look absolutely amazing, despite its very simple construction, which is basically two halves slapped together, and the fact that you will still have to paint the sensor blue. The one unfortunate thing here is that it is quite loose into the hand, but once you kinda stabilize it with the arm, it becomes a lot more poseable. Then for defensive purposes we get the typical dagger shield and you will have to do a bit of painting, some yellow on this stripe on the front and then some grey on the inside. Attaching it to the arm is super simple, you simply click it on there and then you can attach it either on the back or onto the side. And then of course we get to the main event of this model kit which is also part of its namesake, the gun barrel striker pack. And while it is capable of functioning on its own, you're gonna of course want to attach it to the dagger. After applying the three metallic green stickers on the quote unquote cockpit and painting the insides of the thrusters orange. To hook it up to the 105 dagger you simply move the top backwards and attach this little connector piece. And then the whole thing simply pegs into the 105 dagger and now your 105 dagger is the gun barrel dagger. And if you don't have your own action base number 2, you can also use the provided action base. You simply attach this part to it and now your gun barrel dagger is ready to be posed. One thing to keep in mind though is that I've been using this connector on my action base number 2, but it's not a perfect fit. It will go into the hole, but as you can see he is a little bit flimsy like that, but it does give you the most leg movement, which is what I wanted for my poses. And talking about posing and action bases, the one thing that we unfortunately do not get an action base for are those gun barrels. 
Now they are completely functional. You can remove them, open them up and attach the gun to it, but that's it. They don't come with an action base. They don't have the ability to hook up to an action base. And they also don't come with the wire that they're supposed to be on because gun barrels are wire guided. And while this all is unfortunate, you can still get some really cool poses with the gun barrels attached. Oh, and before I forget, this part and the missiles have to be painted orange. And one final really cool thing about the included action base is that you can put the spare parts on it. There's room for the opening mechanics, the rail guns, the attachment part to use it as a striker pack, and even for the part that attaches to the dagger. And while those are all the accessories that he comes with, it is a striker pack compatible mobile suit. So let's see which other striker packs he's compatible with. Things start a bit rough with your Revive Ale striker pack. You can make it fit with a file, but out of the box, it's a no-go. And with the old Sword Striker, it's somewhat of a similar story. The shield, the backpack, and the sword are no problem, but the shoulder doesn't fit out of the box. Either you'll have to use the old high-grade strike shoulders, or you'll have to cut these tabs. The old Launcher Striker, on the other hand, is a perfect fit and looks amazing on the 105 dagger. The perfect striker then is another mixed bag. The weapons, shield and shoulders fit perfectly, but you'll once again have to file down the backpack connector if you want to use it. But from here on out, it's only good news. The IWSP looks and fits great, just as the Noir Striker does. And build fighter backpacks like the Build Booster are no problem either. And to be honest, I bought my build booster specifically for the 105 dagger. The blue is slightly different, but they still go very well together. And if you want to see how some other kits look with the gun barrel striker, you can check out my recently revived Instagram. And with all of that out of the way, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on a single ball joint, goes up not too bad, down a little bit, rotates around all the way. Then moving on to the shoulders, and these are actually pretty cool because when you look at the peg, it's on a slight upwards angle rather than just being straight, which gives the shoulders a more menacing standard look to them. And while you would think that they also give the shoulders more upwards movement, we have a thruster here that even though it is articulated, does prevent the shoulders from going up any further than that. They will of course rotate around all the way, then the arms will rotate around, bend at the shoulder at only a single joint, and the hands are as always on the usual ball joints. The waist is also just on a simple peg and will rotate around only about that much. Then the front skirts are molded together and unless you're going to modify them you will not be able to separate them. The leg go forwards about that far, backwards not too much, outwards about that much. We'll rotate around a little bit on those ball joints, bend at the knees on two joints, but we get a little over 90 degrees on them. The ankle guards will go up and down, and then the feet are on the usual hinge and ball joint combo. So they'll go forwards nicely, backwards nicely, side to side, not too bad, and we'll also rotate around all the way should you want to. So overall the articulation is pretty average even by 2004 standards. While the upward shoulder pegs definitely help with the overall badass feel of this thing, don't expect any modern super dynamic poses out of it. So as always the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well for 1500 yen, we're getting essentially the textbook example of an average Gundam seed kit. Seam lines everywhere, abysmal color separation, and okay articulation. But I still love this thing for its proportions and that amazing backpack. And sadly enough, that's going to be this kit's main attraction nowadays. Buy it for the backpack to hook it up to the modern Ale Strike. The 105 dagger itself is what it is. If you like the mobile suit, it's worth getting this kit. It comes with some cool extras like the action base and the clear marking stickers, but for most other people, you might be better off getting something else. Even when this thing was released back in 2004, average would have still been the best description for it. 
So then for some size comparisons, first of all, here it is next to the Jin and the Slaughter Dagger. And while the Slaughter Dagger is just a remold of the 105 Dagger, I do feel like it's a better deal. It's cheaper and thanks to its color scheme, the lacking colors are much less obvious. Then for some modern kits, here it is next to the high grade Cosmic Era Ailstrike Gundam and the Wyndham. And this is why I do still love the 105 Dagger. On a technological level, this kit doesn't hold a candle to these newer ones, but the proportions don't look too out of place next to them. But maybe that's just me. And then finally, here he is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And this is a very fitting comparison, because the 105 Dagger is kinda Gundam Seed's version of the Jim Custom. It's just a shame that the model kit of the Jim Custom completely outclasses the 105 Dagger. And the Zaku 3 completely outsizes it, to nobody's surprise. So that's all for this review, and as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.